Welcome back to c 2 We're going to talk about secure remote access. So really, when we talk about secure remote access, we're going to talk about SSH, but we also will briefly mention Telnet. So Telnet uses TCP port 23. And the way I remember this is Telnet and SSH are 22 and 23. Now, it's weird to me, and that's how I remember it, is that Telnet is the older protocol, but uses the higher port number. So SSH is 22. Telnet is 23. So they both use TCP, so that's that's easy to remember. Telnet's an older protocol, plain text, which means if you use something like Wireshark and you can get this information, bam, you have all the information. Username, password, CCNA. Man, what an easy password right there. So there you go. Your hacker already got your username and password. They can log into your switch and do whatever they want. On top of that, they can see your prompt that they... Um, router sends back to you they can see any kind of configuration commands you put in maybe you're putting in um, authorization for uh, OSPF or something they can see all that information it's very very dangerous you can see you know username admin password ccna all that stuff is is right there very dangerous SSH, like I said, TCP port 22, it's encrypted, which means you're going to see this. And uh, you tell me out of here where the username and password is. Joke's on you, it's not. So you can see it's talking about all these different uh, encryption algorithms and stuff in here. Um, when you actually get into the content, it's it's got all this junk. It's completely unreadable. So if someone uses Wireshark, they cannot get anything valuable from that unless they have your keys, which if they have that, then, then you're pretty much just screwed. So basically, uh, SSH provides a layer of an encryption for your remote access. And so it's really what we're going to use in every case that we can. So to activate SSH on a switch, we need a few things. First of all, you want to do the show version command and you want to see that there is this K9 right here. The K9 means that it supports encrypted features. Now, you if you were like me when I first learned this, I said, why in the world would they have a version that doesn't support cryptographic features? Maybe they want more money for cryptographic features. But who would want a version of iOS without cryptographic features? And the answer is governments like the Chinese government who um, control the population and do mass surveillance. And it's a lot easier to do mass surveillance if there's no encryption. So um, some countries, encryption is actually illegal and so, um, or certain levels of encryption are illegal. And so they have different versions of iOS for those countries. Crazy to think about, but it's the reality that we live in. So thankfully in the US, we have very many capabilities in terms of encryption. And so we can feel secure um, not necessarily from the government, but from bad guys who, if the government can do it, the bad guys can do it too. So um, um, I'll leave it at that. Anyway, so to configure SSH is actually a little bit complex. And, and I want to spend some time on this because this is important. When you go into the industry, you need to be able to configure SSH from scratch. Very, very important. So first we verify SSH supports, what we just did. Um, we need to show IP SSH command as well to see that we support those features. Next, we have to configure the IP domain. And there is um, a command IP domain name. And then you put in uh, whatever that domain name is. So maybe cisco.com. Now, for your production environment, you're actually going to use the domain name of your actual domain. So if you work for a company, um, hyperconverged.com and you go and, and you are setting this up you would type in hyperconverged.com if you were from microsoft you type in microsoft.com microsoft might actually have a special domain that they use um or different several domains maybe they use maybe it'll be networking.microsoft.com maybe it'll be you know um operations.microsoft.com whatever it is you'll know this whatever organization you work for for the labs we can use pretty much whatever we want um, it'll usually be specified in the labs what they want you to use specifically, like cisco.com or ccna-lab.com, or I think are some of the ones they use, um, just for the sake of the lab. Then, 
of course, we have to do this before we generate these RSA keys. Um, the RSA keys is what um, enables the actual encryption in SSH. We need those to provide the encryption. If these are compromised, then our encryption is useless. They can be decrypted. So we want to make sure we uh, generate some RSA key pairs that are specific to um, our unique domain name. And so they're not the ones that come with um, some switches. I, I don't think Cisco comes with RSA keys by default, but some other vendors do. Um, so we want to make sure that even if we're not using Cisco, we generate new keys. <clears throat> then we're going to configure authentication. So SSH, unlike Telnet, requires a username and a password. Telnet can just require a password, but SSH requires a username and password. So we can do that with the command um, username and then username here and then secret and then we'll put in the actual password here and we'll do that of course in global config mode then we're going to configure the vty lines so uh, ssh unlike the console which has our physical console line right so line con zero we have line vty zero through 15 typically some switches uh, especially other vendors have more some have less it depends. I'm um, usually for the sake of the labs. Again, we're going to use zero through 15. And so you'll have 16 total lines, right? We start counting with zero. So zero is the first one. The one is the second one, etc. cetera. So four, uh, 15 lines, zero through 15, excuse me, 16 lines available. So we want to configure all those lines. So we type in a command like uh, VTY uh, or excuse me, line VTY zero space 15. Um, and I don't know why they didn't do put a dash or something, but whatever. And then once we get into there, we're going to do, um, we're going to require this local authentication via SSH. So we would type in um, a transport input SSH, because we want to deny any telnet connections. And then we want to put in um, login local so if you recall before we would use the login command and the login command is going to require a password login local will require a username and password so if you set this up but you type in login and not the local part then it's going to prompt only for a password but ssh requires a username and password and therefore it's not going to work so make sure that you get that login local all right and then we want to enable ssh version 2. So by default, Cisco, for some stupid reason, supports one and two and puts it in version 1.99 by default. Instead of putting it in version two by default, I don't know why. Everybody else, uh, in fact, I have other vendors of switches that I'm using that have SSH version two is the only thing supported. They don't even support version one, uh, which why would they? I, I don't know. Um, it's just, uh, at least make it the default, Cisco, come on. But anyway, they have it version one by default. So make sure to type in the command IPSSH version two in your global configuration. And of course we can verify it's operational by logging in from an application such as PuTTY. Um, if you use Linux, you can use a native SSH application um, inside of a terminal window uh, because we actually have terminal in Linux still, um, unlike Windows, but However you want to do it, TerraTerm, uh, any other terminal terminal emulation program is um, just fine. So we can show IP SSH. We can see SSH is enabled. It's version 2.0. Um, we can show SSH and we can show connections that are valid. The other thing I like to do is uh, show crypto key gen RSA. And this will show me those RSA keys that we generated. Um, this is something I usually check um, when I'm going over work to make sure they actually generated RSA keys um, to, to, um, to set up SSH. So if you're having an issue with SSH not working correctly, you might want to check this command here. That's it for 1.3. Join me again for 1.4. We're going to go over basic router configuration. And I think we're going to wrap up module one here. So I'll see you in the next video.